Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to a brand new Auto Line Daily. I'm Sean McElroy filling in for John today, but now on to the news. The Environmental Protection Agency is considering reducing ethanol blend requirements next year. Originally, it was mandated that over 18 billion gallons of renewable fuels needed to be used, but now Bloomberg reports that that could be cut to around 15 billion gallons. Refiners must blend a certain amount of renewable fuels into gasoline or diesel, but the EPA might scale that back due to lower production levels of renewable fuels and lower demand for gasoline. Toyota says it will have vehicles equipped with automated driving technologies for sale within the next few years. The company is getting set to show off its system next week in Japan, which can communicate with vehicles in front of it to maintain a safe distance and also to steer the car. But will consumers buy these autonomous systems from automakers? A new study from KPMG says people are more likely to use a self-driving car from a tech company rather than one of the major automakers. And among car makers, consumers would trust autonomous systems from premium brands rather than mass market ones. There are legal and technological hurdles that still need to be overcome, but the report shows that if the technology is right, there will be demand for self-driving cars and consumers will be willing to pay for them. We've been talking about BMW's electric i3 for a while now, and with the start of production just on the horizon, we're getting its final details. The optional two-cylinder gasoline-powered range extender that nearly doubles its 80 to 100 mile range will add about four grand on its $42,000 base price, which is before federal or state incentives. Look for the i3 to hit U.S. showrooms midway through next year. As fuel economy and emission standards grow stricter, it was just a matter of time before automakers would have to drop their bulky, less efficient models. And after 67 years of production, the Land Rover Defender is the latest vehicle to bite the dust. Well, not at least until December of 2015. The company says that it has a replacement vehicle that will join the lineup at that time. Coming up next, a look at what future transportation might look like. There's so much to love about Bridgestone's Dueler tires. The amazing traction, the quiet, comfortable ride, and they're really tough. It's like loving three tires in one. On AutoLine this week, John is joined by Sid Mead, a designer and futurist who has helped contribute to a number of movies, including Blade Runner and Aliens. In the following clip, Sid talks about his vision for how we will be getting around in the future. Projecting 10, 15 years out, where does that leave the automobile and the automotive industry? Well, I did a rendering years ago It was called the 200th running of the Kentucky Derby. And I had valets in in gyro pantsuits with wheels on at the ankle. Now you could put the wheels down and lock, and then you could skate. There's a a gyro right in the small of your back. And they were hand delivering messages, which would be very elitist in a a media transfer world. And so there'll be pantsuits like that, skating suits. I think there'll be a mono wheel, which I've also rendered years ago for automobile quarterly. Uh, mono wheel, gyro balanced uh, enclosures with a face plate. Those were the egg domes, right? That's right. Yeah, they were. So you don't get uh, pigeon droppings on your hair. <laughs> <laughs> at, I hate when that happens. 20, yeah. 20 miles an hour, it's you know, starting. <laughs> and uh, so transportation will become, even now in, in extended architectural environments, you have speed walks, you have lift platforms, you have escalators. And I think a lot of the transportation uh, will be that kind of shared almost a free public service because over 50% of the people right now in the world live in city environments. And that'll, that's not gonna go down, it's gonna increase. Is it, then, then what you're saying is that rather than automobiles, which are still a kind of a communal transportation because they can accommodate multiple yes. people, transportation may then become far more personalized, one unit yes. per person. And the, the freeway system or the road system might very well develop into, be, into being um, Travel ways for automated vehicles delivering stuff and and uh, and taking maybe groups of people somewhere. But uh, I think the automobile is an individually purchased and leased or, or parked 
most of its time, is, is kind of a, a fragile economic model. Also joining John for that show is Jim Hall of 2953 Analytics and John Manugian from the College for Creative Studies. It's a great discussion and you can watch the entire interview right now on our website, autoline.tv. And that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching, have a great weekend, and we hope to see you right back here on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.